Okay, welcome back to Woke Nation. Um, today we're going to be talking about kind of the the the, the youth crisis in America, uh, which I see as as progressively <laughs> uh, getting worse and worse. Um, it, anyone I think who spent some time on social media or pays even uh, a slight um, pays attention even a little bit to the news has probably heard of Greta Thunberg. Uh, now, I don't, I don't really want to get into the whole climate change thing uh, debate in this in this podcast, um, but Greta Thunberg is a 16-year-old Swedish girl who's been all over the news lately because she's been she's been giving speeches in front of Congress, if I remember correctly, the Senate, the United Nations. Um, basically, she's this 16-year-old girl who was, I think she was the basically the face of or the leader of this school walkout that happened, um, that's happened, I think, worldwide. I haven't read too much into it, but it's all these students walking out of schools in protest uh, to the fact that um, organizations like or, or groups like the United Nations and different governmental uh, governments have done nothing about climate change. These are children that are, are convinced because they've been told uh, so by their teachers and by their parents that if something isn't done right this moment about climate change, um, then we're all going to die. Like this is this is something that is going to cause the extinction of our species. Um, I don't believe that, but that's a uh, content for another podcast. Um, I don't think the science is there. I, d I just don't. There's a lot of reasons why I don't believe that. But, uh, and this is a big but, I, I don't have a problem with Greta Thunberg. Um, I, there's been a lot of conservatives that have kind of you know, said things about her I don't think they should have said. Uh, Michael Knowles just got blasted on Fox News for basically saying that he said she was mentally ill. I mean, she has Asperger's. She suffered from depression and anxiety and some other social issues. Um, so technically, she has mental health issues. Yes. Um, I, I, I don't think he was trying to insult her. But anyway, he, he got in trouble for for saying that. And some leftist progressive screamed at him on, on air. Um, but anyway, uh, Greta Thunberg, she reminds me a lot of David Hogg. David Hogg came out of the Parkland shooting and he was like the face of uh, school shooting survivors here in the country, in, in America here for several months. And there was a couple other, I think a girl with the last name of Ramirez who was really big there for a while. Um, David Hogg has a huge, tremendous following on Twitter now. You know, people follow his every word, you know, the, that this kid said and he was all over cnn you know msnbc it didn't matter he was being interviewed by everybody and people adults across the country and our government and elsewhere were hanging on this kid's every word uh he was the face of um anti-gun uh legislation you know it, now obviously he didn't put forth any legislation himself but this is this kid um really was the face of um, what they would call common sense gun control legislation, which anytime somebody uses the word common sense, to me, it means that they don't have an argument, that they haven't thought it through. Um, that, that's just not a, an intelligent philosophical way of summing up your argument. Well, it's just common sense. No, it's not. You're going to have to explain it to me so I can see whether it actually is. Um, but this, the, the, um, what I see as the tragedy here is really the lies that these kids are being told. The Greta Thunbergs, the, the David Hoggs, you know, I, I don't blame them for reacting in an alarmist fashion. Uh, Bre Greta Thunberg's being told by people she looks up to, people that are that that are um, that are there to mold and shape and responsibly um build up her, her view of the world, of culture, of life, of human responsibility, and what the world is like. You know, these her teachers, her parents, it should be the church, but the church in Europe is gone. She's Swedish, so uh, I don't think much of the, the church in Sweden. Um, 
but the, these are all people that are there to to protect her and mold her up and and give her hope for the future and they, i think they've failed her utterly uh instead giving her this bleak nihilistic lie and, and as a matter of fact um i wasn't going to mention this because i don't have the article in front of me but there was there was a, a group of students that testified i think before a governmental uh, body and I, again because i don't have the article I, I hesitate to mention it um, because I can't verify it, but I saw this on, it was on the news here, it was last week, where these these students were testifying that, that what they're being taught in the schools with climate alarmism uh, has really changed and warped their view of the world to where they're they're very nihilistic now. Uh, they, 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 they testified that hope seemed to have been sucked out of life, that, that a lot of students today are just having this attitude of what's the point you know if we're all going to die in in 10 12 years as ocasio cortez is so spouts off so constantly um then what really is the point of bettering yourself what is the point of going to college and getting an education um to me that's one of the main reasons why i think that these these democrat candidates are lying uh, about alarm this climate alarmism why it's a hoax is because you know you, you go and see uh barack obama just bought a what was it 15 million i think dollar beach house i think in the hamptons or something like that um in an area that is projected by climate alarmists to be underwater in just a few years now but yet he buys into it wholesale so at least when he's on stage and in front of the cameras so it kind of makes you wonder how much they really believe this nonsense they're peddling um but i want to move past that um Basically, I, I'm just trying to point out that 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 what the kids are being told these days is really destroying their view of the world. You know, um, the same goes for David Hogg with the Parkland shooting and, and the Parkland shooting. Um, we keep asking ourselves, why, why do why do school shootings keep happening? But the, the real fear for me is why are kids killing other kids? And I know some people talk about this, but that that's the thing that I think really needs to be like zoned in on and honed in on and really debated and really thought about. And we really need to come to uh, some sort of answer on this. I mean, I think I know the reason. Um, it's just a question of whether the country at large would see it that way. I doubt it very much. Um, but the real tragedy here and what really scares me about it is that these are children killing other children. Uh, and they don't seem to be hesitating about doing it. And um, I do, when when you when you hear these kind of these students testifying, and again I don't have the article, but testifying that that this climate alarmism that's being shoved down their throats uh, daily in the in their school system is is really making them nihilistic and hopeless. Um, that doesn't bode well for future school shootings, in my opinion. Um, it, it, it makes me think that there will be more of them. Uh, they're already hopeless as it is, and for a variety of reasons that I've gone into in other podcasts, I think the the removal of, of human worth and value, uh, when you t remove like the, the creation narrative and instead replace it with evolution, which just tells you you're another animal, uh, it removes your self-worth um the uh the the nihilistic view of atheism where you're just meat for the world and so no matter what you do in this life it is irrelevant you know it has no bearing no meaning no ultimate um value your life is just like the squirrel's life that got run over by a truck five minutes ago um so is it any wonder that we have so many school shootings? Uh, but what's really frightening is, um, is, is something that is not being talked about at all. If you turn on the news, you will not hear about this topic. And it's the topic uh, that I've raised before in previous episodes. It, it's pornography. Um, if there's one thing that's rampant in the culture today, it's pornography. You can't get away from it. I have a Juno email account, and if I go in to check my email, along the right-hand side of the screen will be a number of scantily clad lingerie models um, 
barely, as I said, scantily clad up and down flashing on the side of the screen. Um, you drive down the road in the summer and there's 15, 16 year old girls in shorts that come all the way up their rear ends uh, because they've been told and taught by this culture, by our, our um, by social media and by the, um, the advertising, um, by advertising campaigns which dominate um, social thought that that sexuality and expressing yourself sexually um, will will get you will raise your self esteem will will increase um, the way people look at you in a positive way all of these things not true at all in fact it, the contrary is true uh, but this is what they're being told um, and, and the pornography. Um, in and of itself has become what what used to be considered pornography say in the 1920s and the 1930s is now the norm so as i said those scantily clad lingerie models on the side of my screen when i check my email in juno the, that was pornography in the 1930s in the 1930s they used to have these little binocular uh like movie screens that they would put a quarter into and then they would turn the handle and it would be a woman slowly undressing down to her panties basically except the panties they wore back then were not the panties they wear today where it's like a thong or lingerie like a, an outfit you would wear before and it or when you're going to have an intimate night with your wife uh instead it was like what they would call grandma panties like not today we would be like what what is that you know um so it it really has changed uh over time. Uh, there's an article I'm going to read in a second that really kind of highlights this, uh, but even the pornography that was popular in the 60s, 70s, 80s um, is nothing compared to what is out there today. I mean, yes, the, the, the women were, were naked and everything, um, but the type of pornography is what has degenerated so much um, and, and is very fitting with, 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 uh, with what it actually is, which is an addiction. And addiction is a progressive thing, which is why when when young kids start out viewing pornography, it starts out as like taking their father's Playboy magazines and running off to the shed with them um, or viewing like uh, Baywatch or, uh, you know, whatever, a Victoria's Secret catalog um, in the dark in a closet. You know, that's how it starts out always. Um, but like any addiction, something that is sin or addictive, it is progressive by nature. Um, and so it takes something darker and more intense to satisfy and get the same um, the same release, as it were. Uh, they, they, scientists have proven that, that uh, masturbation through porn, um, by viewing porn, uh, has the same release to it, the same dopamine release in your brain that cocaine does. So this is something that is extremely highly addictive. Um, and, and, and as an addiction is incredibly progressive in nature. Um, and children that are, because of how easy it is to view on the internet, children younger and younger are starting to see pornography um, and again it's not the pornography of the um on the internet it's not the pornography of like the 60s and 70s like your father's playboy magazines that he keeps in the basement you know that that's tame by today's standards what children are finding now is actually the hardcore stuff because you can access it just by typing in a few key words on google and these sites do not vet who comes into the site you know and who views the content um, it, it used to be that some sites would would require you to put in a credit card number to prove somehow that you were 18 years of age of age uh, before you could go into the site Nothing like that happens now because of piracy. So there are many sites now that just completely steal and pirate pornogra pornographic videos and put them up on their site. And there's no sort of vetting or proof of what of how old you are before. Not that you should 
anybody of any age should be viewing this stuff, but, but to keep children from viewing it, they don't even make an attempt. There is no attempt. And so children can go on to Google, can go on to any of these sites and just type in a few key words and very quickly be viewing some of the most disturbing material that you can, that is out there. Um, and, and the way pornography has progressed, it isn't, it's no longer just a girl, you know, dancing seductively to, to, um, to um, slow uh, slow music or whatever, she takes her clothes off. Now, it's uh, a lot of the pornography today is so graphic and violent that it's 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 a literal literal recreation of a rape scene. Um, and and I, I'm not the only one to talk about this. I mean, there's there's people that are if you read the articles online, it doesn't get talked to talked about on the news. But there are people that are incredibly worried about this, the effects this are, is having not only on children but it, particularly on children, but also on adults. What sort of link does this have between adults and rape? Um, when, when you're viewing that kind of stuff on a continual basis, there's, there's no way you can tell me and there's no way you can prove that, that that does not completely debase your view of women, your respect for women. Women become a sex object. And the women in these videos... Um, a, a, a typical video would be somebody coming to the front door, attacking the woman, the woman saying no at first. Uh, but then as the man continues, she gets turned on and, and, and then just flings herself into a very violent, intense sexual experience uh, that is just absolutely degrading. The, the men spit on the women. They curse at them. They call them the most foul names. And the woman... Uh, and the, the really damning thing about it is the woman's response. The, the woman is turned on by it. So this isn't something that the woman um, calls the police about. Rather, the, the woman exhibits arousal to being raped, being called all sorts of derogatory names, and, and, and being spit on, kicked, slapped, whatever. And, the, and children who have no no knowledge of sex really are viewing this stuff, you know, because it, there's no way to stop them. These, these sites pirate the videos, put them on there. Um, you know, just like YouTube will pirate a video. Porno, there's pornographic YouTube sites, um, that are out there and, and anyone can view it. And so these kids are watching these, these rape scenes and then going to school. Um, now this article that, that I ran across, um, Basically, this woman uh, did some research and she works at a clinic uh, or at a hospital and, and most of the cases of, of, of these young girls being raped, uh, in most cases or in a large uh, proportion of them, it, it, the girls are being raped by other children. So it is children raping other children. And in almost all of the cases, these children, they, they don't just, you know, wake up one day and go and do something like this. It's a learned experience. So it's either abuse in the home that they've witnessed, say an abusive parent or, or, or family member who's abusing them. And so they've, in a very warped, perverted way, uh, internalize this and, th and either act out in anger um, and pain or because they think it's normal or they're exposed to pornography that has normalized this type of behavior. And this is overwhelmingly the case in many of these, in, in so many of these situations now, children raping other children because of what they've seen in pornographic videos. And you don't hear this being talked about. And it's it's because I have another child on the way and I have a four year old, four year old. These kinds of things are really starting to freak me out. Um, the way we really are screwing our kids up completely and nobody seems to be talking about it. There really doesn't seem to be any awareness that that the people the the the, the true victims in society of all this crap that is out there are the kids, you know, that it. When adults uh, watch these violent videos and then go and and, um, and pursue this kind of violent behavior that they've seen in pornographic movies, there's their kid witnessing this, and you've just warped their perspective of sexuality forever. Um, as a, and so that child is now a victim um, because of selfish perversion of an adult. 
Uh, the same goes for the pornographic videos. I mean, these things are not, there's not even an attempt to keep them out of the hands of children. And, and somehow in our warped society, we, we view this as art or, or something else. I, it, it's beyond me how, how this stuff is even, is even defensible um, to choreograph a rape scene. I mean, how do you defend that? Um, and, and then uh, furthermore, to, to make no real effort to, to say that this is fantasy or, or anything like that, to, but to film it as a realistic scene and then make no effort to keep it out of the children's hands. Um, I'm going to read from this article because this, this was really eye-opening for me. So this is um, from protectingyoungminds.org. Uh, the article is called Sexual Assault Expert Warns of Heartbreaking Trend Among Children. And I'm going to skip down a little bit to where, and this is uh, Heidi Olson. And she says, I remember distinctly where I was sitting several years ago when my gut told me something was off. I have learned from more experienced nurses that trusting your gut often gives insight into unspoken but vital pieces of a situation. I was talking to the parents of a five-year-old girl who had been sexually assaulted by her 12-year-old brother. The father of the children stumbled upon the assault, so there were no questions as to what kind of violation took place. As the tearful parents grieved and asked, why would our son do this, my mind pondered those same questions. Here is the reality. Children learn these types of sexually aggressive behaviors. Children don't instinctively act out sexual violence on each other. They don't instinctively want to violate or push sexual boundaries with their siblings or younger children. These things are learned. Of course, some children who act out in sexually harmful ways have been victimized themselves, but my intuition told me that there is an unspoken factor fueling many assaults. Many sexual assaults occur because of what young perpetrators have been exposed to via screens. Children watch violent sexual acts with no previous direction or insight into what is normal, healthy sexual behavior, and then perform these sexual acts on other children. Right. Um, and a, a lot of this, what she's talking about here, it comes directly from the, the total dissolving and breakdown of the family structure. You know, we act like these things are just, you know, tiny unconnected problems like, oh, over there, the family's falling apart. Oh, over there, the church is disintegrating. Oh, over there, we've kicked God out of the public schools. But pornography and rape, that's a separate issue. No, these things are incredibly connected. They all hinge off of each other. And if one thing disintegrates, then the next thing does. It's like a house of cards. They are all dependent on each other. There's a reason why they say the family is the, the cornerstone of society. So if the family disintegrates, there goes the rest of society. Um, so when she's saying uh, these children have no uh, previous direction or insight into what is normal, healthy sexual behavior and then perform these sexual acts on other children um, in, in a healthy home, the, the, the parents, the father and the mother would have at least had a discussion of what is what what if you see this run away from it and talk to us, or this is normal and this isn't. Instead, with no father figure or a mother that's gone all the time, the children have no figure like that. It's left to the to the public school system, you know, basically to take its place, the, the almighty government. And we know how that goes. The public school system right now is engaged in, in t encouraging children to, to play around with their sexuality, to play around with gender roles. Um, and then we wonder why they rape each other, why they shoot each other in schools. The public school system is responsible for telling them that there is no God and that they are just animals like like anything else in the street, just meat for the world. And then we wonder why they beat each other up, why, why one child doesn't respect another. Why is bullying so bad if there is no God and we have no value? Uh, furthermore, it goes on. As my mind raced over these thoughts, the mother of the child, children, the two children blurted out, well, we have found a lot of porn on our son's phone lately. Do you think that that has anything to do with this? And I knew, the woman says, Heidi says, in that moment that these two things were completely intertwined. Um, let me see here. I'm going to skip down. Um, 
I thought the typical perpetrator was most likely going to be a creepy old man in his 60s who lured kids into his basement with lollipops, but I was so wrong. The biggest age range of perpetrators that I see in my hospital are children. In fact, for the third year in a row, our biggest age range of people committing sexual assaults are children ages 11 to 15. The biggest age range for perpetrators of sexual assaults on children are children 11 to 15. If that doesn't scare the crap out of you, I don't know what would. If that doesn't make you angry at society for completely failing our children, I don't know what does. And if that doesn't make you angry and disgusted with the church in America for failing society at large, I don't know what does. This is a damning indictment of just everything about our country that we could get to this point, but yet nobody talks about it. Pornography is just, you know, that thing that we all laugh about when we watch American Pie is the, the kids sneak into their room and, oh no, dad just walked in. Oh, son, well, here, I'll give you a few magazines from back in my day. You know, the, we treat these things as casual, silly stuff, and yet here are the consequences. And nobody's laughing in these families' homes, I'll tell you that right now. Um, so she says, let that sink in for a minute. These kids aren't even old enough to drive, yet they are committing the most, se the most sexual assaults in our region. To put this in an even better perspective, my hospital sees one of the highest volumes of sexual assault victims in the United States. So our numbers are large, meaning these young perpetrators are not an anomaly. I was alarmed by the number of 11, 12, and 13-year-old perpetrators I was seeing. So I started looking through our past sexual assault victim stories and found hundreds and hundreds of records of sexual assault survivors who were perpetrated on by another child. Pornography is often a main factor and sometimes the only factor that influenced a child to act out in a sexually harmful way. As I studied our data and have seen more and more patients, I realized that it's imperative that we understand the way that pornography is creating devastating effects for children across our country. The children that I see are not in a vacuum. Stories of child-on-child -child sexual abuse are ringing out all over the world. The trend is growing rapidly. With pornography being so widespread and easily accessible, remember, nobody vets. There is no way that they can that they can tell whether you're 18 or not going onto a site. Not that an 18-year-old would be better off watching rape than a 12-year-old, but still, they don't. There's there's no there's free access. You can type in anything you want into Google or any of these search engines and watch anything you want, literally. With pornography being so widespread and easily accessible, more and more children are viewing and subsequently acting out what they see on vulnerable children. And is it any wonder? Of course they're going to act it out on their peers. Of course. This is, to them, normal, so they're going to act it out on those that are around on a daily basis. Other children. The solutions are not quick or easy. There's shame involved with families who have a child sexually act who who have a child sexually act out on another child. Most families do not want to admit that this tragedy has occurred. Um, she talks about therapy groups um, to compound the issue. We live in a culture that continuously normalizes pornography, which is what I was talking about. I mean, you can't even go onto your Juno email page without seeing women with pasties on. Um, that continuously normalizes pornography and refuses to acknowledge the ugly truth that it fuels sexual assault and rape culture. Porno and then there's the pornography normalizes violence. I have seen things that I cannot write about, violence that is hard to fathom, let alone explain, moments that have left me nauseated and in tears. Things are inflicted upon beautiful, innocent children at the hands of other children. Brutal assaults are carried out by the hands of teenage boys who believe that sexual violence is normal. They're not doing something that they think is disgusting or bad or or, or perverse and taking a, a sickening, satanic delight in it. Rather, they're doing something that they see as normal, average, run-of-the-mill, everyday behavior because 
because nothing about it when you view it on the internet makes you feel like it's not normal everything about the videos the way they're set up are there to entice and lure you in and give you the impression that everybody in there is having a grand old time the women in there give the impression that it is that women enjoy being raped and spit on and mocked and laughed and that the word no and this is the worst part about it they are being taught in these videos that the word no does not mean no. In fact, most of the time it means yes. I see kids who think that anal and oral sex are normal before you've even gone through puberty. And that's insane. I come face to face with stories about kids who do not listen when a victim repeatedly tells them no. Why? Because they've seen the violence, the strangulation, the slapping, the name calling of women a thousand times in, porno in pornography, and they think that it is normal. Then they act it out, leaving behind a wake of destruction for themselves and their victims. <sighs> if there's one thing that, that we can be sure, assured of, it's that if if we don't turn things around in the country, if we don't start in the family, in the homes, with, with fathers actually staying in the home and raising their children up uh, and being a godly example, uh, that's where it starts. That's if you want to stop this problem. It's that people like me who are parents um, stay in the home and be aware that, you know what? You may struggle with pornography. You may struggle with wanting to watch pornography. But even if deep down you don't, you can't find it in yourself to to not want to do it. In other words, you, you think, well, I don't think it's all that bad. At least think of the example that you have to provide for your child, that, that you don't want your child looking up to you and thinking those things are normal or right. Uh, it, it's a disgusting, perverse parent that could actually view that kind of stuff with their children. So the next time you want to sit there and watch something like that, think, would you sit there and watch that with your five-year-old? If the answer is yes, you belong in prison. If the answer is no, don't ever view pornography again. Um, I'm going to try to think of it like that. Um, but yeah, this the, I don't understand why this isn't being talked about more. If only may, maybe the main reason is because of money, like all other things in this country. You know, um, the pornography industry is a billion dollar industry. Um, it, it's it's becoming one of the biggest money makers in the country right now. Uh, don't take my word for it. You can look this stuff up for yourself. I mean, the, the porn industry is just, I mean, it's a worldwide industry. It's, it's making more money than anything else. And why not? Why shouldn't it? Uh, when we have unrestrained, you know, it, we've told ourselves as a culture just to, to not to that that restraint, that moral restraint is, is actually evil, that we're telling ourselves what is good is evil and what is evil is good. And that moral restraint is a form of bigotry or oppression and that and that and that acting out any desire that comes into your diseased brain is the norm and, and is actually a boon for society. The, we are damning our children. This is, you, do, you, you can't have children go through things like this without irreversibly destroying their lives. You know, a, a child can't rape another child and then just, oh, well, you know, let's go watch Mary Poppins and then go, no, you, they're done. They're screwed. It's over. It's done. They, there's therapy for the rest of their life. Um, if there's a miracle, maybe, but if not, that child is traumatized for the rest of his life, uh, his or her life. And that's, and uh, also I, I feel for the, for the perpetrators, because a lot of these kids don't know what they're doing is wrong. So they're screwed for the rest of their life too. You know, imagine the guilt and the shame of that. Uh, you thought it was normal and come to find out as you get older, the horror of what you did. Um, all because some videos uh, made by adults who should know better um, made these things, these horrific acts, th seem normal to you. Um, smiling at sin. 
you know, I can't help but think that, you know, the, the, the judgment that must be waiting, just looming in the sky above our country right now, uh, because of things like this, you know, Jesus talks about, uh, talks about this, how it's better for somebody to tie a millstone around their neck and throw themselves into the sea than to, than to, to bring this kind of destruction on young children to cause young children to sin or to, to stumble, as he says, basically to sin, um, what else is that then to, to normalize pornography and to cause and warp a child's mind so much that he would think it's normal to rape another child? I mean, imagine the kind of judgment that is waiting for us on the other end of eternity when we normalize something like that. Uh, we need to really pray for the country and for ourselves and for our families and that the church will will regain its its place where it needs to be in the center of community so it can condemn this kind of stuff and, and be a, a place that families can run to for for safety and solace and and recovery and and hope you know when these things do happen um, but it's not there right now you know it's it's lost its place um, and that's a great tragedy, you know, because where are these kids going to run, you know, to a therapist who, who really, I don't believe has any real answers for them. So that's the episode for this week. Um, something to pray and think about. And I, I can only pray and hope that more people become aware of how, how this is not a trivial issue. You know, we tend to wink at, at pornography and think like, it's just, <laughs> you know, this thing that like, you know, everybody, everybody's got a few dirty pictures on their, on their computer. You know, <laughs> did you wipe your hard drive clean? You know, all these jokes that we tell, it's not funny. You know, this stuff actually destroys lives and it's, it's ruining and destroying our children, my children and your children. So we got to do better. All right. Well, that's it for this week. In the meantime, good night and God be with you.